All right, Sketchpad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. So today we're talking about the Kayla Montgomery and the interview that she had and the callers that called up and was saying certain things to her. I'm not going to reveal what they said, but we're going to listen to it and then we're going to give our commentary. Hey, man, listen, if you want us to react to your stuff, link's on the screen. If you want to donate, that's on the screen too. So let's get right into it, man. So to give us some backstory. Miss Montgomery is basically, she met Trump. Um, she did a, uh, she had Trump come to her job. She worked at Chick-fil-A or whatever. I don't know if she was a manager. It doesn't even matter. She worked at Chick-fil-A. And uh, Trump came there and um, Trump platformed her, put her in front of his, in Atlanta, in front of his crowd. And she spoke on it. And we did release a video about that. Um, we watched it together and we listened. So this right here is her doing an interview. And she's talking about how she feel about Trump and certain things. And the caller calls up. And I want y'all to hear what these callers are saying. And I got a lot to say about this. So let's listen. Calling us from Washington, D.C., Independent Line. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. And thank you for C-SPAN. Um, I lived in Georgia during the 2020 uh, election, and, um, you know, I didn't vote for Biden or Trump, but I do remember this same sort of rhetoric coming from Ms. Montgomery, um, you know, trying to claim that, you know, black voters were going to uh, change sides to the Republican Party, um, you know, and in 2020, I think the black percentage was like 6% for Trump, so it's just... I just find it funny that every four years the same, you know, kind of song and dance gets gets laundered uh, by the Republican Party. And I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, Miss Montgomery, she's a she was the former city director of Blexit, which is a far right. You know, we're going to try and get, uh, you know, we're going to try and quote unquote free the plantation mentality is a literal quote of the organization of Black voters. <laughs> wow. So let me get this right, homeboy. <laughs> I'm assuming it's your white. I'm assuming you're white. So let me get this right. Trying to get people off the plantation is far right now. So if Blexit is a organization telling black people that they need to get off the democratic plantation and free their minds from mental slavery or whatever you want to call it, you're saying that that's far right. So Republicans or whatever you want to call it, telling black people that they need to think for themselves and stop following certain people because that's a slave mentality. You're saying that that's far right rhetoric. That's unbelievably crazy to me. That someone would call a white guy would call up. I'm just assuming he's white. We're going to assume it and say that that's far right for black people to not want to be in mental slavery. This is this is nuts to me. But hold up. It gets better. Uh, by the Republican Party. And I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, Miss Montgomery, she's a she was the former city director of Blexit, which is a far right, you know, we're going to try and get, uh, you know, we're going to try and quote unquote, free the plantation mentality is a literal quote of the organization of black voters. And it's founded by Candace Owens, who's a far right loon. So I just think it's disappointing when C-SPAN, you know, platforms people like uh, McKayla Montgomery or Sebastian Gorka or constantly refers to the Washington Examiner or the Washington Times, which are quite literally far right newspapers that are made up. I mean, the Washington Examiner, go look up who founds them. Next, right. you're going to be, you know, referring to the Epoch Times. So, all right. I just, I... All right. So, before she responds, this is what cracks me up. I have conversations with my friends all the time about who founded certain things, right? But most of them never want to mention about the Democratic Party and they founded all the, all the atrocities. They never want to talk about that. But they'll always point that this person found this. Oh, yeah. Back in 1954, he found this. And it was him. But when I say to them, well, back in this day, the Republican Party 
went against these things. And the Democrats found this and they found that and they found KKK and all this stuff. And they'll be like, well, no, 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 that's not, no, 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 that's not it. Like, yeah, it is it. But I want y'all to listen to her response. Colin, we'll, we'll get a response from Michaela Montgomery. Go ahead, Michaela. First of all, I'm a huge fan of Candace Owens, and I went to my first Black City event here in Buckhead back in 2019. And the speeches that I heard, the visualizations that were presented to me, I was like, wow, this is great. And when it comes to getting off the Democratic plantation, that's a real thing, and I don't know why somebody would feel like I, myself, would be offended by that. If everybody thinks the same, has been fear-mongered into thinking the same way, living the same way, then yes, that's a plantation, because how in the world were so many slaves who outnumbered their slave masters continuing to be slaves. It happened because they were fearful of doing something different. So let me stop her right there. First of all, she's smoking you homeboy. I don't know who the fuck you thought she was talking to. That's number one. Number two, motherfucker. If she was talking about getting out of mental slavery, how are you advocating against that? I don't even understand it. How the hell are you advocating against it? The woman is saying that she wants to get out of a mental slavery and you're saying it's a bunch of crap. How? How are you advocating against that? Even if it, even if it was, it could be, it could be any other thing. How are you advocating against a person who's saying that they feel like they're being mentally enslaved and they want to get away from it? How are you advocating against that? You know what I'm saying? If I, if, if I, if, 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 if S, if you felt as though that you was being mentally enslaved by, a, 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 I don't know, Sony PlayStation. And I said, man, and you said, I'm trying to get out of this. And I said, man, nah, bro, you got to stay there. What do you mean you're trying to get away from PlayStation? They the rest for you. Are you kidding me? It's like, this, this is what it sounds like to me. This is crazy. When we say that Democrats are on this Democratic plantation, specifically talking about black people, it's because, yes, you guys are all blindly following a leader and you're scared to do something different. Additionally, to think that somebody like myself, who can clearly articulate their points, their opinions, their life experience that have led them to support certain candidates, it's very interesting that somebody would demean C-SPAN for having a guest like me on TV. There's plenty of people who think, act, and wish that a voice like mine had a bigger platform. So it's unfortunate that people like that feel like we should be silenced. Smoke. All right, let's talk oh to God. Ladley and Maria. Oh my God, the smoke, bro. She smoked you, homeboy. Go sit down and, and go go finish playing Minecraft or something, nigga. She smoked you, bro. Oh my God, bro. That was a great answer. Georgia, Democrat. Good morning. Uh, yes, I, I did not know that you knew Candace Owens. I was because she's pretty much been uh, outcasted by the by the right because of her stances on Israel. But anyway, um, you will have a, a good job at Fox News at some point. I guarantee you that. Um, and the things you point out on the Democrats, but their failures, you're absolutely right on some of the things. The Democrats fall short, but you know, at least, at least we try. Like, I mean, the Republican policies are just, just the complete opposite. Okay. The last thing I want to say, they're never going to let you in the club. Okay. And you like, like the movie Django, you are the character of Samuel L. Jackson. I don't know the exact like, terminology, but like, not Uncle yo, that's oh. Oh my God, yo. Yo, if you're telling me that she's a house nigga, bro, you need to go sit somewhere, bro, and never talk to anybody. You literally called a black woman a house nigga, bro. You literally called her a house nigga. Oh. This is what I mean. So when people talk about liberals, listen, bro, white liberal racism is the worst ever, bro. Because they feel as though they have a pass to talk to black people any type of way because they feel like they had a hand in helping black people. This is white. This is this is the same type of racism. If anybody on the right or if any Republican has said that, it'll be all over the news. It will be plastered everywhere. She called him. She called her. He called her a house nigga because that's exactly what Samuel L. Jackson was in Django. He was a house nigga. Hey. No different from the character in, in, in Django, the Samuel L. Jackson character. <laughs> what? Uh -uh. That's crazy. But no one says anything about this. These, yo, these liberals, 
be super racist. And I'm telling you, they feel as though they can, they have the proper pass to talk to black people any type of way. And no one says anything. Black people go along with it. And yeah. she has to sit there and keep her composure. If that was me, I would have went off on the motherfucker. Like you lost your, what? You know what I'm saying? But again, you got a lot of these older black people who are okay with this type of behavior from white people, but they always saying, well, we live in a country where there are white racism, but they don't call out liberals for being racist. This is a, that's a clear racist statement. Like, come yeah. on, bro. Listen to what he said. I feel like we should be silenced. All right, let's talk to Ladley in Marietta, Georgia, Democrat. Good morning. Uh, yes, I, I did not know that you knew Candace Owens. I was because she's pretty much been uh, outcasted by the by the right because of her stances on Israel. But anyway, um, you will have a, a good job at Fox News at some point. I guarantee you that. Um, and the things you point out are the Democrats for their failures. You're absolutely right on some of the things. The Democrats fall short. But, you know, at least at least we try. Like, I mean, the Republican policies are just what? the complete opposite, okay? <laughs> the last thing I want to say is they're never going to let you in the club, okay? And you, like, like the movie Django, you are the character of Samuel L. Jackson. I don't know the exact, like, terminology, but, like, not Uncle Tom, but, like, Uncle Tommy or, like, you are a complete sellout. Now, look, this is how you know these people are retarded, right? He literally said... That they're not going to let you in the club. But Samuel Jackson was in the club in the movie. <laughs> he was in the club. He was yeah. a house nigger. He's literally in the club. <laughs> For you to say that they're not going to let you in the club. She's not trying to be in the club, idiot. <laughs> That's the thing. She's trying <laughs> to get out of there. Yep. This is how stupid these people are. And they don't ever listen to what they're saying. They're not going to let you in the club. She don't want to be in the club. That's what she's trying to tell you. Samuel Jackson character was a house nigga who literally lived in the house with the slave owner. He's literally in the club. <laughs> you can't make this up, bro. This shit is crazy. Oh, my God, bro. All right, and we'll go to Robert in... Oh, I can't respond to that? Oh, yes, you can. If Thank you, like. you very much. Because, first of all, it sounded like that was a non-black person telling me that. So, as a Democrat, that sounds pretty racial and pretty divisive. Next, it's very interesting that I, again, would be called names or be compared to fictional characters because of who I choose to support. Again, these people who are calling and making these derogatory statements about me, who I choose to support, are denying the fact that, again, who are you to tell me that my personal personal experience is invalid. I think that that's something that a lot of Democrats need to look within because how have you tried? Kamala Harris is in office right now and has not tried to do anything about the border, has not tried to not tax people on tips, and has not tried to do anything about our failing education system. So everything that she's promising she can do for you on day one, she could do right now, but she's not trying to. So that's something to just, you know, for some Dems to take home. Robert in Aurora, Indiana. All right, man. Yeah, bro. Go sit down, bro. I'm 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 gonna end it right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna end it right there. But yeah, man. So what's your takeaway from that, man? Cause that was a pretty interesting clip, and that just goes man. to show you, man. Like it goes to show you. Man, those people were brutal um with their statements. Not saying that they were right. I'm just saying they were brutal with their statements because like She's literally on air and they're saying this to her live. And and usually when usually when you have that that amount of disrespect to another individual, they usually cut the person off. None of those people got cut off at all. Every mm -hmm. every single person from what we listened to were allowed to speak their piece. I found that funny because like whenever you're on a radio chat live and somebody comes out of pocket you usually had the people say all right that's enough click you know I what i'm saying next they, call they, they cut the last guy off though okay I mean, well i i didn't i didn't I'm know not sure I didn't... but i think they did i think they cut him off after he said uh something about uh i don't know the uncle tom or, or, or all of a sudden i think they cut him off after that 
Yeah, I, I yeah, I, well, I didn't, I didn't catch that, but, but they let the other dude fly. They let him, they let him right through the, let him right through the fence. You know what I'm saying? I felt his was just as dis, just as much disrespectful as the other one. I know, but I, you know, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry for cutting you off. I think he called back. I should have played that. He called. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. He called back. Yeah, yeah, he called back. And, and uh, yeah, let's watch that part. Aaron, independent in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. I would like to address my comment to Mrs. Montgomery. Um, if she doesn't know how she's in her current station of life uh, based on resources or uh, uh, housing taxes or just her luck of the draw, I agree you're not very smart. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, wait, 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 Aaron. What what are you talking about? What do you mean exactly? Let's sound smarter when we ask the question, please. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you, you made a comment earlier when mm -hmm. you were living in Nevada and you moved to Atlanta. You, I don't know if it was my resources in Nevada because I guess they had pretty good school systems. Actually, we don't. Nevada was ranked property. very low when it comes to education. It just so happened well, that our government allocates know, our dollars well, better. But go ahead. Well, but well, uh, but initially you said you didn't know if you were smarter. But if you think resources in and regards to how I feel, my level of, of intelligence is in relation to the people me? that I've met out here. Well, yeah, uh, Michaela, let I'm him finish. Go ahead, Aaron. I'm sorry for talking while you're interrupting. Well, you go ahead. Carry on. I think I, I understand I what you're getting. You by. were, okay, you heard my sentiments earlier in which I said I moved out here, and I don't want to say that I feel like I'm smarter than anybody else, but was it the resources that were allocated to me? Was it the fact that I got lucky with amazing teachers? Da, 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 da. Nevada ranks very low on education, so let's not act like, oh, all of a sudden, I'm not smart. No, I noticed that even with Nevada being ranked so low in education, I felt like the quality of education that I received was much better than the ones that kids are receiving out, out here. Property taxes. Okay, property taxes. Property taxes. So are you telling me that, that with all the black wealth education. with all the black wealth that exists here in Atlanta, with all the black millionaires that live here in Atlanta, why in the world do 92% of APS students are illiterate? Make it make sense. And we have Democratic mayors, we have Democratic city council members, we have Democratic commissioners, and for whatever reason, 92% of the kids here cannot read. That statistic did not exist in Nevada. So again, I don't know if it was the fact that I got lucky. I can't say that, oh my God, it's the teachers that suck out here. I would never demean our educators here in Atlanta. But what we can acknowledge is the numbers, sir. And so while you want to call me not smart, please tell me what your side has done to fix the illiteracy rate that we see see in our black children. Absolutely nothing. And in fact, not only have they not done anything to address the illiteracy issue, but then they're further confusing their kids by confusing your kids by telling us, telling them that men can give birth, by telling them that there's 53 genders, and that by telling them that your love for your best friend must mean that you are gay, you are a pansexual, asexual. Kids under the age of anything high school should not be thinking anything sexual, period. Sexual should not even be in their vocabulary. So for you to say that I'm not smart because I'm willing to call out all of the degeneracy that exists within our current education system only points to your lack of intelligence and your lack of initiative to actually do something in regards to saving our children and uh, saving our schools. All right, oh let's talk God, to bro. Sam. Don't even, don't even respond, nigga. <laughs> Yo, she fucked you up so bad, bro. I can't even, listen, bro. You can't respond after that, bro. I, you lucky that people don't see your face because you will be on a wanted poster right now. He will be coming at you crazy, bro. She put you in your place, bro. There's nothing. I hope you see this, this video. I really do. Go sit your ass down, bro. She put you in your place. You thought you had her and she basically put it right there, laid it right for you. Now, I don't know if he said anything after this, but let's In go. In Rome, Georgia, Democrat. Hi, Sam. Okay, no, that's it. All right, good morning. And I have a question. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm done. But yeah, man. <clears throat> that girl's a superstar, man. I ain't gonna lie. And and she she doing she doing the work, man. Can't even say she ain't. She out here doing the work, man. Can't say you can't say nothing about this chick. She is doing the work. And I respect her, yeah. man. Yeah, I respect her.
She said the 53 genders. I was dying. Yeah. That was funny. Just, that yeah, was yeah. funny. She's doing the work, man. So and, and she's, and she right. And she right. Like, you know, and young, these young, these young kids, these young babies, man, don't need to know nothing about sex or anything like that. They don't need to learn nothing like that. They're too young. Their mind cannot comprehend or understand what sex is. You know, you know so for her to put that out there and let those school systems know, like, look, you can't, you can't go try to push this onto these little children, but they damn sure try to do it. They damn sure try to do it with all this, you know, stuff they're trying to put out there in the school system. They damn sure try to do it. But I'm glad she put that out there because a lot of the school systems are trying to say that they're going to implement this one day. Yeah, they are. So either way, man, that was a good episode, man. Sketchpad podcast. All right, man, we out of here. See y'all. Peace. Bye. Good night.